got a plan for changing or fixing the ceiling so we don't have to have these logs in here all the time. Okay, so we're in the tent and I was able to fix this um, section of the roof that I would normally have that stick in to keep the water from pulling up right here. So I've got this I don't know, dowel rod that's about six, five feet long. I don't know where I got it, been in the attic for a long time. And then this square plastic tubing that was the frame of one of those plastic shelving units. And I've just created, it's just friction fitted in there. And that works good. It pulls it up and the water will shed off very I did come up with this two by four on a four by on a one by four tied with uh, 540 550 cord or uh, where I forget what you call that and then the board running across the frame here I'm gonna shove it just a little bit so it completely so got that and then I readjusted this one over here and it should be okay, it shouldn't pool the water at all. All right, the purpose of that is so I can put a post in there. When I'm cooking, I'll put a couple of nails on three sides so I can hang my utensils and I don't have to throw them on the table or set them next to the fire, I can hang them up and then when I'm done, I can pull it out and the pipe is beneath soil grade so we're not going to trip on it. Uh, I think that's probably going to work there. Let's see if this will fit through. I'm going to have to make them bigger. This is the back of a swivel chair that I'm going to use as part of a, a gate. So that will catch anything that may be trying to fall out just a makeshift easy little backstop that you may not have the parts for but I had the stuff sitting around I built this archery target hanger I've got a big uh, hanging bag and then I when I bring that up then I can figure out how far to space the hooks here to hang it on and I've got about a 40 yard target range cleared out over there for the uh, archery but yeah the bag will hang here <clears throat> and then you shoot at it just a small piece of pallet couple of two by fours very easy and some boards down here for stabilization at the bottom um, other than that very simple homemade probably already have the stuff to make it with this is a wood crate that I'm going to try to put in the tent if room allows uh, tonight and that will be the wood box now it was intended for a larger tent I intended to cover the openings there but that's just where we're at at this point so I'm just going to get in there and we've got a dustpan and a broom so minor inconvenience to clean it up every couple of trips but it, uh, that's to get the wood inside and at least have dry wood when we get here. So I've been working on the archery range and I needed a place to put the arrows instead of keep and put them in the quiver or the uh, every time I shoot. So right here at 20 I've got a nail I hang it on and then when I go get retrieve the arrows and then waiting to use the arrows I just took a piece of firewood buried it in the ground and put a uh, the center of a plastic bottle screwed it there and I can just set them in there and they will stay vertical and I won't have to bend down and pick them up at 10 yards I put a log limb in there buried it did the same same thing there and then I've got a nail here in which I can hang the bow when I go retrieve my arrow now I'm working on the backstop. I filled the IKEA bags and the uh, other plastic coated bag. It's the same material that those plastic um, tarps are made from. So I've got the black cloth here 
and I'm going to try to configure it in a way in which I really would like to have this gap here filled. My concern is that if I go too much, obviously I could hit the, the target uh, and that's going to tear the arrow up. But I've been, when I've had inconsistency in shooting, I have shot in that area there and then I've had to retrieve it back in that mess back there. So I'm going to fiddle around with it, see what I can make happen, and then cover it with a black tarp or black cloth here. Black cloth, cloth is just regular fabric. It's going to get moldy, it's going to get rotten, whatever. It'll be fine. That may add more resistance to the penetration of the arrow to keep it from flying way back there as well. So that's what I'm going to try to make happen here. All right, I think that's going to work the way I want it. Seals off the back. Preferably, preferably, hopefully, stopping arrows from going in the brush back there. Also, the backstop did what it was supposed to do. You can see the arrow hanging out right there. So that did excellent. I don't have to chase it back in the debris, debris and possibly have it uh, into a tree or something. All right, that's complete. Just a piece of uh, pine that was dead. Had to work out good. Got one there, one on that tree. Have one on that stick that we talked about. One on that tree. And then one on that tree and illuminates just enough light at night. You can see whenever you're staring at the campfire. So it just adds a little ambience to it. Lights up the area a little bit. Uh, more of a natural way rather than have light strung from the trees. But if that's your thing, that's your thing. I'll get that replaced and we'll see how the new one works. I got in there with a lot of... Uh, took too long to do it. What happened was this point here, let me get the light out here. The point on the other one had been shaved down about a quarter of an inch in order for it to go in and do the twist and then come back up in and get out the hole. So I got a I don't know if this is a bastard file or what it is, but it's a, a file for $2 that I picked up at Goodwill. The intentions was to use it on the axe, but this was $2 well spent in order to have a warm fire tonight. So, always have extra tools. I'm work on this bench. Now, the concept comes from that image there. That's what I'm going to try to duplicate in some form or fashion using that. I've got to finish trimming that part off the gas. The chainsaw ran out of gas last time I was doing that. So we're going to see how this turns out. There's Joey in action putting together this bench. Sitting bench. What other kind of bench would there be? A decorative bench? Yeah. Alright, so he's almost done. Now he's trying to decide if he should cut it off on the top there. On the, whatever you want to call it, the side. I'm going to run two, three, uh, four inch nails on both sides to lock it in. I think it's going to be, I think we just leave it as is. Yeah, that's good for two people. Yeah, I don't think I need to knock this down. No, it looks, it gives it character. Which I knew that that's the process that's going to happen every time, but we're not long term here. So this is what I've got. I've got one of them ice coolers and I've got, 
And what I can do is I can just unscrew broad head. And pull it out and reattach it. Can't do that with that uh, field point target. And see, I've just got insulation inside there. Here is the paper towel and aluminum foil holder. It's just uh, a bracket off from of an old, like what the miniature greenhouses that you can get. We had one that fell apart, so we saved the. Uh, the plastic here, and then we had bed, uh, day bed uh, railing that would fit perfectly inside of there so we didn't have to buy any dowel rods, and we could make it whatever length or width we wanted, and it keeps everything up off the ground, organized, and it works pretty good. You could construct this uh, really any way you want, but if you had those greenhouse pieces, it makes it a lot easier. And then on the back side, we just took another piece there, cut it in half so it would uh, hang on the rail. Okay, so we got this foam, foam mattress, memory foam mattress um, from Schlemazon. And um, it's pressure packed like a sausage. There we go. So all you got to do is open it. We're going to open it on, we deflated, okay, we deflated the air mattress. air mattress, and now we're going to open this thing, and it's going to poof open like an inflatable raft, just kidding, um, but yeah, it's going to become, it's supposed to be six, six inches, it's, I don't know, what, two and a half, three right yeah, now? Yeah, like two and a half, three right now. Yeah. So let's see what happens here. Um. Oh, okay. I'm not sure. I guess that's the top. That's the bottom. Does it matter? Yeah, it matters. Oh. Bottom, bottom. You got like a tarp canvas material on it. Okay. first and see what happens. Right. Oh, I think it's already it's already inflating. <laughs> okay. So it it takes a while to inflate anyway. It's like 8 to 72 hours. It'll be at its fullest in 72 hours, but the projects in the tent is storage. We've got a limited amount of storage in this 10 by uh, 12 Ozark Trail tent. So under the cot, and this could be uh, in your home, we found a dresser drawer. We had a couple left over from an old dresser. And then wheels off of an office chair or uh, one of those mobile um, carts and just drill the hole slightly smaller than what the diameter is and force it through and it locks in and we can roll it out and under the bed for easy access for storage when we're up here. Another thing that I've done is when I purchased this stove I got a whole bunch of fire bricks. Now I've never used fire bricks inside of a stove and I know what the intended purpose of the fire brick is. However, I'm going to use them in a different manner. Under the stove, it gets very, very warm when the fire is going well. So I put the bricks underneath there to absorb the heat and set it going in the ground and then seeing if that will help release some of that heat inside the tent on really cold days. So we'll see how that works. So we got that tree down. Six dollar wedge. Otherwise, that tree would have probably fell in, this, in the road and uh, uh, cutting the tree up it pinched the saw and I had the wedge here so I didn't have to figure out how to get the blade out of the pinched log so worth the six dollars to get a, a wedge. Now there, 
they're plastic ones. Now the old fashioned ones are metal, but the bad thing about the metal is if you hit it with the blade, you're done. I nicked this with the blade and the blade's just as fine. It just took a little chunk out. So keep that in. Overhead option and we actually forgot the light we were going to bring. So Joe used this headlamp that came with our lantern as a gift or something. So if you've got a wood stove in your tent and it's a permanent kind of situation, one of these uh, thermostats or thermometers that go on the, the stove pipe really makes a big difference. I can tell just by looking at it, let me get a good light on it, where and what's going on inside. If it's in the white area, I gotta add wood and try to get it stoked up. If it's in the yellow, we're in good shape. If it's in the red, I've gone too far and I've gotta get some of that heat out. But it works really, really well. Got it $5 at a yard sale at, the local, at a nearby town. Uh, so they run for they run like 25 to 30 I think is what I looked up but they just are magnet they stick to the pipe and they tell you exactly what's going on you can see as we've been talking it's been getting closer to closer to the red so I've got to vent some of that heat out so we don't overburn the pipe and cause problems there so good little thing to have we've got a lot of pine down by where we parked the car there's pine 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 good dry pine so what I do is when I have a little time, I'll keep splitting it and breaking it down until little twigs, you throw a little birch bark or just a piece of cardboard or scrap or a junk mail underneath this and this will take off very easily inside or out. And I just got in a little crate here and that will be sufficient for a number of weeks so it's dry getting it cut so it stays dry i'm going to put it in the tent okay what i'm trying to do here is a recipe i saw off youtube channel kenny of all trades he's a truck camper out of minnesota what he takes is a pudgy pie maker and he butters two pieces of bread face down and then he fills the inside like a it's like grilled cheese but he puts uh, pie filling your favorite pie filling you put them together you put it on one side and then you put the bread on and you put it together I've got a double here and what you're supposed to come out with is basically a buttered toasted bread with very warm pie filling inside of it I think we're pretty close now That's not bad. The only reason it's taken a while is because I'm getting ready to leave and I don't want to put a whole bunch of wood on this stove, on this fire and then have to pour water on it to put it out. But it's a two Mississippi hot. So when I get it done, I'll show it to you. Okay, the results. You want it, I, I think you want the butter to be a little on the toasted side. That side's not toasted as much, but you can see the pie filling oozing out that's going to be really good and i will do the second one you just put your bread in here it's already hot and then you take your pie filling and mound on a safe amount and it's not going to completely cover your you know i just spilled right there covered uh piece of bread there and then you just close it up lock it in and put it over the fire and let that cook for about oh, five eight minutes and it turns out that so well worth the uh, effort there Okay, so I've got this ash bucket. It's not really a bucket. It's a snowman canister. It's one of those things that you get popcorn in at Christmas. Didn't want to go buy a galvanized bucket. Had this in the attic and knew it would work. But I want to put a handle on it. So what I've done is I took and pressed in with my Phillips tr drill bit enough of a compression to where I could put a screw in there, pull it out, 
would be better if I had the right drill bit, but that's what we've got going on here. Then took a Phillips head and pushed it in there to get it uh, to open up. Now what I've got here is just some heavy... Ah, oh, what was this from? I don't remember what this was from. A heavy duty tomato cage, maybe? So anyway, I'm just going to figure out what I need and then cut it and bend it in there and that will be the handle. I'll show you when I get it done. Alright, there's the finished product. Inside I was able to put them in and then I took the pliers and bent them so it's very difficult for it to slide out. Now, I can maneuver it and I don't have to grab onto it. Handle's a little bit bigger than the unit itself, but it will work. And that project is complete. Alright, so... I noticed when I was hunting, I use inner liner socks and then wool socks. My feet don't get cold, but boots get wet. So I do want to dry them out the best I can between hunts. So instead of buying a boot dryer, I constructed this. It is a five inch wide or height box cut in the bottom. There's two holes for soda bottles. And then on the top, I, nest, I cut it just big enough for this fan. This came off of a grow tent from our garden business uh, from a sponsor years ago and it runs off of I guess that's a what is it a, uh, that's a USB standard USB that we plug into either the power bank or a power pack and I can set these here and the air the heat will go in and dry the boots now it doesn't dry it 100% it's not like two um, hair dryers going in there and pumping 100 degree air in there. But it does make a tremendous difference. I come back, let this run for an hour, and then I hang it up here to finish drying most of it with the heat coming off still. Really makes a big difference. So that could be something that may uh, help you if you're trying to get at least some of the moisture out of your boots and then finish drying them with the heat from the stove. So it may snow, it may not snow. Multiple different reports, nobody knows anything. We want to leave the tent up at least till the first week in December after firearm season and that's when it really starts turning cold. So instead of doing like I talked about about four videos ago, running a cable outside from tree to tree and getting a big tarp and shedding the snow up that way, for what little snow that we are expected or potentially could have because of El Nino or El Nino or whatever that weather pattern is, this is a solution I came up with. I went down by where we parked and cut these pine logs and notch them at the top so they fit into the pipe or they fit into the uh, framework and I can hang on that and the frame doesn't move at all. So I did that on three sections here and then I took smaller ones on two sides here to take the pressure off here and I think it will work for the purpose that we need. It's kind of like a log cabin inside of a tent but I've been told I can't leave it up like this. So this is a very good short-term solution to snow. This obviously is not going to work in January or February whenever they get up here 18 inches of snow in a 36-hour period. This is not the solution, but for what we need, this will work and it's free and we didn't have to buy 55 foot of cable and a massive tent that we have to tie down like a Christmas present every time we walk away from camp until we decide to take camp.